what is it like in Australia now with the pandemic? Um, so we didn't get hit very hard. Uh, we were shut down for a little bit, but businesses started opening again and the basketball courts started opening. So we we're able to return to our normal lives and yeah, it's been, it's been easy over there. A majority of us have not been able to travel during this pandemic no. either. What was it like doing an international flight like that? Uh, it, the process of flying international was pretty hard. Um, it was it was a lot to a lot of paperwork to fill out, and it was just different, you know. Um, but I'm glad I had my teammate with me to, you know, experience it together. Yeah, it was different. Coach, we'll now go with you. You're the dean of the WAC coaches women's basketball here. Fifth season for you. How have you seen the conference change? Uh, it's night and day since when I joined. You know, I was the rookie coach and just even trying to understand the logistics of where everybody was located. Um, and so since then, we've had teams leave, we've had coaches leave, um, and we've had new teams join. So um, it's completely different. Uh, Interesting enough, this year, the schedule, we're flying to the same teams we've always flown to with the schedule. It just so happens that we're not going anywhere new. But I'm also very familiar with Dixie uh, when they were in the Division II conference when I was Division II and Cal Baptist. So that's not surprising to me. Tarleton is the only one I wasn't really familiar with. When you look at the new code or the new schools, how do you scout them? Um, you know, I, I think that um, – Luckily, there might be a few games being played prior. Uh, you know, we're all kind of crossing our fingers and, and hoping that we will all get some type of preseason in. Um, but you just, you, you have your contacts still at the Division II levels, but also everything's on synergy. But it's totally different going from playing a Division II uh, league and, and going up. Uh, I think Cal Baptist did a tremendous job of that in the last couple of years. Uh, transitioning. So I would expect the same out of Dixie and Tarleton in that regard. What are you able to tell us about your non-conference slate coach? Oh gosh, not much. Um, we got a lot of offers out there. We have, uh, you know, what we have here is um, we had our, we had our preseason set, but then um, I thought it was more important to try not to fly uh, than put us on a lot of planes uh, and dealing with the pandemic and all of that. So we're trying to drive. And of course, for the Pacific Northwest corner, uh, there's not a lot of teams to choose from here. Whereas if you're in SoCal, you can drive an hour and play 10 different teams. So um, we've been working with uh, Portland. Um, we've been trying to get Portland State, uh, but everybody is waiting to see what their governors are gonna do. Um, so we're kind of waiting on that. Um, right now, um, we have Utah State coming here. Uh, we have plans to travel down and play Oregon. Uh, you know, play down there. So uh, we'll just, we're hoping in the next couple of weeks, everything will be resolved and we'll know exactly what we're doing. Courtney, you're the top returning scorer from last season. Where do you feel most comfortable taking the big shot? Um, obviously the three, but, you know, I've been adding a little bit of driving into my game. So getting to the basket, which I'm feeling more comfortable with. But yeah, well, I'm excited to see how the season plays out. How are you, or how can you describe the team's chemistry so far this season? Well, it's been really helpful at the beginning in small groups. So it was a really great way to, you know, connect with the freshmen and the transfers we have. So we've really gelled as a team. And, you know, you can really tell on the court how our chemistry has really, like, improved and we're really being a great team together. So. Coach, that same question to you. How are you feeling about the team's chemistry so far this year? Yeah, I'll just add on to what Court said there. Um, you know, working with the small groups as long as we had to. I mean, we were working in groups of five and fours. Uh, we felt really gifted when we got to move up to six. Uh, and then finally, we were able to play with our entire team. Uh, what it allowed us to do to, um, one, get to know the skill set a little bit better, but the personalities as well, instead of them worrying about going against returners and all of that. Um, I think it's always interesting when you gra uh, graduate a rather large group of seniors. Um, so we had five seniors graduate, personalities graduate, and then you just get to see um, the evolution of the younger group um, become more vocal. 
Um, but you can tell that they get along. There's a lot of love. And I, I think it's uh, people understand what we're going through right now. Um, so we really try taking advantage of every single opportunity and try not missing an opportunity. Uh, and that means an opportunity on the floor, but also it means an opportunity off the floor to maybe do something with someone that you normally wouldn't because of circumstance, circumstances um, kind of put you in that position. So um, a lot of dynamics, a lot of new people, uh, but uh, the willingness to get better on the floor is there without question. You mentioned some of those graduating seniors, one of them being guard Kamira Sanders. How do you go about replacing somebody like her? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, you've asked me that question quite a few times because we've had some very, very talented people graduate, and I'll kind of go with my rote answer there. You don't replace. I, I just think you retool your team and you change your team. So, you know, Kamira had a very dynamic game in what she was able to do. Um, she was one of our best defenders with Olivia Crawford as well, um, you know. But then you just – you ask Courtney to do a little bit more. You ask Georgie to do a little bit more. Um, you can't replace – Chimera with another Chimera because there aren't another Chimera, but you just find the different pieces along the way and, and hope that the combination of maybe two or three people will do something uh, bigger and better than what Chimera did. Coach, looking back to last year at the WAC tournament, last mm -hmm. game before the pandemic really hit and the tournament was canceled, you beat the number two seed Utah Valley. How far do you feel like that team could have gone in the tournament? Uh, you know, I would be lying if I if I didn't tell you I thought we'd be playing in the championship. I really did. I thought overall uh, it was one of our best defensive games in which we were totally on point. Uh, Courtney will tell you it wasn't a very good game for her, and I would tell you it was one of her best games because she was shut down offensively, but she really honed in defensively. She got key rebound after key rebound um, for us. We were locked in. We were dialed in, and I, you know, I don't know if we would have played Bakersfield or Grand Canyon the next game, but I just really, really felt like we were going to be playing Kansas City uh, in the championship game. Courtney, how easy is it to buy into a program when a coach believes in you so much? Oh, it's super easy. Um, all of the support coach especially um, has given us it really gives us the confidence to, you know, go out there and just play our usual basketball game and, you know, play with confidence. And that's really helped me and I know a lot of players on the team. Well, ladies, thank you so much. I'm now going to send it over to Michael Navarrete for media questions. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get things started with Chris Thompson. Yeah, um, Coach, good to uh, see you. Um, I know you personally probably don't like it very much, and you'd love to have a break in between games, but how does your experience in Friday and Saturday leagues uh, help you when it's time to get your team ready for those quick turnarounds? Yeah, so what, what am I in, Chris? Now, I don't know, 25 or 26 years, and only uh, recently in the WAC have I not played back-to-back -back games. So um, clearly in the Northwest Conference, we played Friday, Saturdays. Uh, we were a little bit closer in terms of driving distance, and the same thing in the CC2A. Uh, the, I'll go with the pros first. At least you're not playing a different team. Um, I think that that's uh, pretty vital there. Uh, and then you're just either going to, tweak something that you did really, really well and try doing it better uh, on the second night, or you're going to find something that the opponent did really well against you and you have to counter that. So uh, I'm used to it. Uh, I know the Gleasons are used to it as well. Um, you know, so I think we'll be okay in that regard. Uh, that is the good thing that we're not traveling between games and that there's 24 hours between the games. So those are both really good points for us. Okay, Kyle McDonald. This is Kyle McDonald with WAC Hoops Digest. I just wanted to ask you, you know, with regard to retooling the team when, you you know, you lose a Kamira, you lose a Joanna, like, has it been – is it easier to do that when you have – you're able to have full practices or like you mentioned earlier where you were able to break up in groups and see more of the skill sets of players that are new and so forth? Which one would you prefer in that situation – and who's maybe a player that stood out in that regard? 
Well, <clears throat> I would prefer not to have the pandemic and let it be our choice. That would be my number one preference uh, in that regard. Um, I think it's, we always try working in small groups, uh, just in, in terms of, even if we have, Kyle, even if we have everybody together, we will break off and do bigs and littles. We'll do different things within, but the energy in the room is so much better. And I think the potential for growth and learning is so much better when you're working in a big uh, big setting. Um, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, people have forgotten a little bit, although she was uh, mentioned second team, uh, I believe in the media, you know, kinsey has been injured for two of her years with ACL. So I, I think uh, kinsey has got a, a lot to prove on the floor. Uh, Haley Weissney, uh transfer last year was injured and so only got to get to play in um, the WAC games. Uh, Georgie did a really good job of backing up Jojo. But, you know, we also have Chinway. We can go small and Chinway can play the five because she can do it. So there's a little different dynamics there. Um, you know, I think our transfer Bree is going to surprise some people. A uh, very, very talented guard out of the junior college level in the SoCal. Um, so I, I think – and I think learning our system – as a junior is, is a little bit difficult, but uh, she's got a great basketball IQ and she's picking up her system incredibly well. So I think people will be really pleased with her game. Hey, back to Chris Thompson. Yeah, Courtney, with the way last season ended and uh, the quarantine and not being able to be with your team, how great is it gonna feel that first game where you're playing an opponent, you get to put on that jersey and you get to take on somebody else? I'm really looking forward to that first game, you know. Uh, in practice, we've been building up to going up and down the court, which has, you know, been challenging at the start, but we've really, you know, improved. And now we're all looking forward to just playing that first game. And with our teammates, a full game of basketball, which we haven't played since the beginning of the year. So we're really looking forward to that. Kyle McDonald. Courtney, I just want to ask, you have some big shoes to fill I mean, not not that you know you you're gonna have to replace them, but as a team leader, you got some big shoes to fill. How do you feel about that, and how excited are you for that opportunity to be, you know, the person everyone kind of relies on? I wouldn't say I'd be like the main person you rely on because I really think that the team this year, everyone has something to bring to the table. Um, we have some really great players, the freshmen, um, the transfers which can really bring a lot to our game. We have a lot of playmakers and leaders who will really step up. So I'm looking forward to playing with them all and you know, just coming away with a lot of wins this season. So, yeah. Okay, one more from Chris Thompson. Yeah, Susie, uh, you and I have talked about this before uh, with the growth of women's basketball in the Pacific Northwest with the success of the Seattle Storm and Washington and Oregon and Oregon State and Gonzaga. Now that you're starting to recruit some of these girls that have grown up seeing success in women's basketball in the Northwest, are you starting to see players that are maybe a little bit more ready for Division One basketball? Oh, without question. I, I think this, um, this region has exploded. Uh, I think that uh, you see little girls with storm um, jerseys on nonstop, but you also see them, um, you know, the, uh, you see the growth of the game with University of Washington, Gonzaga, all of they've done. And just like you said, Oregon, Oregon State. Um, I mean, it is, uh, we are on the map. Uh, clearly also we get to host a regional. So I think people recognize uh, the love of basketball here uh, as well. So I, I think the Emerald City is going to shine bright uh, in the Pacific Northwest in general. Um, people are ready to go, but also that just, Chris, that international flair of where you, you've seen it probably on everybody's roster. I'd be surprised if you don't see an international uh, student athlete on rosters across uh, the entire United States because more and more people are wanting to come over and get an education, but they want to, they know that this is top level basketball and it helps prep them then to go back to their country and play professionally. I mean, we have three people playing professional basketball right now off of our roster this last year. So um, it's out there. And I think uh, young women are recognizing uh, basketball doesn't have to stop after college. Uh, and that's just absolutely phenomenal. Okay, great. Seattle U head coach Susie Barkham and junior guard Courtney Murphy. Thank you guys for joining us. Really appreciate your Thank time. You. Thank you. Thank you.